Hey everyone, Bud here from Bud Smart Home. In our last video, we talked about how to use Homey's Best Buy Guides to make smarter choices for your smart home. Today, we're taking it one step further with a deep dive in order to show you how you can use the Homey's Best Buy Guide along with the flow card information that is available in the device's Homey app to compare and contrast the capabilities of a selected device so that you can make intelligent buying decisions. The process I'm about to describe will guarantee that the devices you select will meet your needs and that you don't end up wasting money on a device that does not perform as you might expect. Hey, I wanna take a brief pause here to mention that my next video, I'll address a question I've been asked by several viewers. In that video, I will reveal the real reason I have not made the switch from SmartThings to Homey Pro. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you're the first to know when that video drops. Now back to our topic of the day. For today's comparison, I'll be studying a couple of compatible smart doorbells. The two doorbells that I've selected to review are the Eufy E340 and the Foscam VD1. So let's go now to the Best Buy guide to work through the comparison process. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly what to look for in a doorbell, how to use the guide to find the best device, and also you'll discover why it's critical to check out the related apps and view each sensor's flow cards to get the most out of your purchase. As you'll recall if you watched my previous video, the Homies Best Buy Guide does more than just list compatible devices. It actually breaks down each device's key features. This is how you discover if the Eufy E340 plays nicely with your existing setup or if the Foscam VD1 has that one feature that perfectly aligns with your smart home security needs. The goal here isn't just to buy another gadget, but to select a smart home device that truly fits into your system. You also want a device that enhances your daily routines and provides long-term value. And when you dive into the flow cards, you see how they can provide you with information about automation possibilities. Want a smart doorbell that can trigger your porch lights at dusk? or send a notification to your phone when a package is left at the door, flow cards show you if and how these scenarios can be created. It's like having a cheat sheet for automations to ensure that you're not only buying device, but also unlocking its full potential. All right, let's investigate and compare these two smart doorbells using the Best Buy Guide and flow cards. First, we need to go into the Best Buy Guides and we're going to find uh, the category that we want to look at today and we're going to go into smart doorbells. Now as I mentioned in the previous video these guides are extremely useful they tell you what to look for in the device that you're looking to buy. So for smart doorbells video quality and field of view is important they say opt for a smart doorbell with high definition resolution video 1080p or higher and a wide field of view Additional features, you want to look for things like motion detection, customizable zones, two-way audio, and night vision capabilities. The other thing that's really important is to make sure that you decide whether you're going to use the existing doorbell wiring or there's an, the availability of a battery. So if you don't have a current doorbell that's wired, you know, that may be an issue. You may need a battery-powered doorbell. Durability and weather resistance, and of course, storage and data privacy. So is this a cloud storage only type of doorbell, or is the doorbell able to store information locally on a SD drive? So storage and local privacy, consider the availability of local or cloud storage options, and if it's cloud storage, is it secure? So looking down through the list, I'm going to assume I have a budget between, say, about $140 to, uh, to $200. And I also want to make sure that the doorbell has all of these capabilities, the able to capture motion events, button events, and snapshots. These two cameras, the Foscam and the Eufy, fit that bill. They're in my price range. So I'm going to compare those two. So now I'm going to show you if we click on, let's go with the Foscam first. 
So that you click on that link, it takes you right down to the FOSCAM, gives you some of the negatives and positives. It's a 2K camera, ultra wide lens, dual, it uses dual band Wi-Fi. It's got expandable storage. The one negative listed is face recognition requires a subscription. You'll see this on a lot of doorbells. It says here, this doorbell can record up to 20 faces and recognize them when they approach. This is an AI feature requiring a subscription. It also says the camera footage can be stored locally with an expandable SD card for up to 256 gigabytes of storage. And this circumvents the necessity for the cloud requirement, but you will not have that capability to be able to record and recognize faces. So if that's not a big deal to you, this may be a good deal at 145. This is Euro, so it would be a different price for the US. This is compatible with the Homey Pro. Now here's the nice feature. If you go on the link, this will take you to the app. It says to pair it to Homey, you need the FOSCAM app. So if we click on that, it'll take us to the Homey FOSCAM app where you can install the app. This gives you some basic information about it, but what I want to go into is click on this doorbell and it'll take you to the cards. And this tells you a little bit about the capability of the doorbell. So you can create flows based on these when factors. When the doorbell is pressed, when a human face is detected, a human body is detected, motion is detected, or a snapshot is taken. And if those events occur, or you could have <clears throat> these as actions, so there's quite a few of them. So the types of actions that you can create, you can change the brightness, the contrast, flip view, it looks like, set infrared light mode, set mirror view, set motion detection. You can reboot the camera, but more importantly, you can take snapshot, set voice prompt switch, set volume, or wake up the camera. So you have some capabilities here. Now I want to contrast those capabilities with our other selection. So we're going to go back to our video doorbell information and look at the Eufy, which was our second choice. This is the E340. It is available at a little more money at 179 euros. The pluses for this, it's got 2K HDR footage, dual cam setup, it means there's a camera down here in the bottom where you can view packages as well as one up on top where you can view people. It has a high quality build and it has smart AI detection. Now the diff big difference between these two cameras is that there are no hidden subscription fees for the Eufy E340. It says all features are available out of the box and you can use the Eufy 340 with your existing Chime or connect it to one of Eufy's home base stations. Also said somewhere up here, it can be hardwired or used with its rechargeable battery pack, making it a versatile choice. It can capture 2K HDR resolution and it has two cameras instead of one, which doubles as a motion sensor, monitoring every corner of your front door with zero blind spots. So it has a, not, a lot of nice qualities. What, what about the app for it? Now, if we go to apps, this one did not have a link in the article, so we'll go to apps for Homey Pro. This is Homey Pro compatible, and we'll just type in Eufy. And there is a Eufy security app and a Eufy clean app. You want the security app. That's where all the cameras are. And if you look here, here's a dual doorbell, and it has the E340. So this is the app for the doorbell that we're looking at. What I want you to notice here is when you look at the when commands, so this is what you would use to start a flow. There's a lot more commands here. You can turn it on, turn it off. Uh, whenever motion's turned on, you could have an action that happens when motion alarm's turned off. Battery level has changed, temper is, temperature has changed. Here's the interesting thing. They have person detected, the ability to detect if someone is loitering, motion detected, pet detected, doorbell pressed, or vehicle detected. So there is a lot of AI features. And remember, these are features that are available without a subscription. So that's a pretty big deal. 
You can also couple these when commands with end commands. So let's assume that a vehicle is detected and the doorbell is in arm mode. This would suggest that you're away from home. So if you want to be notified whenever a vehicle pulls up and you're away from the home, that would be a nice feature. And look at these then commands. There is a whole bunch of them in here. So you can do many things. You can turn it on, turn it off, change the video quality. You can also toggle the wide dynamic range switch toggle the LED status, um, send a quick response. You can also have actions of toggling night, night vision, set, setting the security mode, toggling the light, turning the generic alarm off, turn the alarm on for so many seconds, take a snapshot, also take a snapshot using a self-hosted service. So there's a lot more capability on this particular device which again would be the Eufy 340 video doorbell. So if it were me, even though this cost a little more than the Foss Cam, I would probably opt for this Eufy. And, and particularly because even though the Foss Cam is less, you're gonna have considerably more money paying a subscription to be able to gain that face recognition capability. Whereas on, on this device, although it doesn't necessarily have face recognition, it can recognize vehicles, pets, or people, which is a pretty good benefit, I think. So there you have a simple explanation of how to use not only the buy guides, but also some of the cards that are associated within the apps. And by the way, I've had questions a couple times about whether the Homey apps for the Homey Pro cost money? No, these are all free apps. So, and there's there's thousands of them in here. <laughs> See, well, maybe not thousands, there's hundreds of them in here that you can download to your hub and then thereby gain the capabilities of some of these popular devices. So you now have the knowledge and tools necessary to discover which smart home devices are best for your particular smart home needs. Also, you should now appreciate why it's important to review related apps to ensure that you get the most out of your purchases. And there you have it, a deep dive into how to choose the best sensors for your smart home. Remember to subscribe and set notifications for my next video wherein I will reveal the real reasons I have not made the switch from SmartThings to Homey Pro. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with anyone you think might benefit. If you have questions or want me to cover another device category, then drop me a comment below. And until next time, make sure that you're using Homie's Best Buy Guides so that you can future-proof your smart home.